Oscars are susceptible to hole in the head disease. They can eat themselves to death, survive in poor water conditions, and you must feed them live foods. These are questions that you've heard a lot in this hobby. And you know what? We haven't talked about Oscars in a while. So let's play a little game of Oscars true or false. All right, the first one, Oscars are susceptible to hole in the head disease. This is true. In fact, if you look online, if you do a Google search for hole in the head disease, most of the fish that you're gonna see in the articles about it are gonna be Oscars, but it's not limited to only Oscar fish. It's any fish can get this. And we're gonna talk about what causes that and, and all of that kind of stuff uh, in a second, but trying to do this with very few edits today. Uh, I wanted to talk about this book here for a second. Lisa and I like to read books about fish. I don't know, we're old school. These things are called books, in case you weren't aware of that. She bought me this book a while back. I, I'm not even sure where she got it from. This book was published in 1982, written by Neil Pronick. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because, oh my, how things have changed. In 1982, this book, it would suggest to you, if your fish gets sick, just destroy that fish. Don't worry, just, just get rid of it. It's not worth the hassle of trying to remedy whatever ails that fish. Just thought that was kind of sad. The, a lot of the other information in this book is great, but very different back in 1982 versus now, but just thought I'd point that out. If you're sick, if your fish gets sick, just kill it. So anyway, hole in the head disease is caused mainly by poor diet and poor water conditions, which is what causes most ailments in fish. But this is gonna be something where it will, the symptoms will be big, giant holes in the head. Now, uh, in my experience, I have had Oscars with hole in the head disease. It's not an instantaneous killer of the fish. It's pretty, pretty shocking to see it, and, and it looks really sad when you see it, but that's not necessarily what's gonna instantaneously kill the fish. It will if it gets worse and it just ends up eating away at the fish completely. But what's even worse about hole in the head is these are open wounds. These are big, wide open craters that, it, I mean, it's like you have a giant wound on yourself and it hasn't scabbed over. That wound is now susceptible to all kinds of diseases, parasites, bacteria, all different kinds of infection. They are sitting ducks at that point. So this is something that the second you see it, you're gonna wanna do your best to remedy that. Uh, good, clean water is gonna be the number one uh, remedy for it. But also, if you wanna go with medications, things like Maricin, General Cure, these are gonna be good products for this. Uh, that metronidazole is kind of a fix-all for all of these real extreme things. Uh, but what I have found is the best treatment for hole in the head is to not get it to begin with. So I'm very particular about what I feed these fish. I'm not gonna be feeding them crickets that I catch in my yard, and I'm certainly not gonna feed them the dreaded feeder fish because whatever is in that fish is gonna go into your fish. And I know for me, with these three, big ones back here, I would be devastated if something like that happened and it was my fault. So keep the water clean and give them a good solid diet, one that is free of contaminants and you should not have to worry about this and also keep the water clean. Did I say that twice? I don't know if I said that twice, but once you do have it, if you do, then treating with products like General Cure, Maricin, uh, heavy water changes that should help but you know, there's a million different strategies, just like every fish disease, to correcting hole in the head. Look it up, read as many articles as you can about it, take all of that information, formulate your strategy, and then go from there. That's what I would do because I'm certainly no expert. Oscars can eat themselves to death. Well, this is definitely true. And Oscars are probably one of the fish that's most well known for this. There's also several different types of catfish and a lot of different fish 
that will, will be guilty of this. They're basically gluttons. They'll eat anything. Uh, but Oscars are the ones that come to everybody's mind when you say, watch, this fish will eat anything. It's, it's going to be Oscars that they're going to be talking about. I've heard so many different stories from people, uh, fr crazy things that they're feeding Oscars, things like frozen mice, and then, of course, feeder fish and going down to the lake and catching little fish and minnows and all of this nonsense. I've heard every single story, but the one that stands out to me the most is a customer that came into our store back when we had our shop. We don't have it anymore, unfortunately, but this woman came in and her Oscar was like her baby. I mean, she treated that fish like it was the most important living thing on planet Earth. And she said, without fail, every day she cut up hot dogs and threw those in for her Oscar. And they had to be all beef Nathan's hot dogs. She was very particular about the hot dogs that she fed her fish. And hey, the fish was like seven years old and apparently happy. Am I going to feed my Oscars hot dogs? No. And if I was, I certainly do, wouldn't do it with the expensive Nathan's. But this lady did that and her fish was as happy as can be. I bet it was. I would be too if I ate Nathan's every single day. But the thing is, Oscars are gluttons. They will eat and eat and eat. Their mouth will be absolutely stuffed with food to where they, they can barely move because if they move, it'll fall out. It reminds me of our youngest daughter when she was young. She would just shovel food into her mouth. Like she would be like, and she would like try talking with her mouth full of food and it was horrifying. I don't know why she did that, but she would have a mouth full of food and then she would just sit there and work on it and work on it and work on it and then finally get it all down and then she would do it again, like shovel it all in. I don't know why she did that. She may still do it now. She's 19 years old now. But anyway, that was seeing that was very similar to watching Oscars eat. They will just put it all in and then just work on it until it all goes down. The fun thing about this tank behind me is I have the two Severums in there and their mouths are considerably smaller than the Oscars. So when I feed them things like freeze dried krill or something like that, which is kind of messy, uh, they will just stuff their mouth full of it. And then every once in a while, some of it will come out of their mouth and you'll see the Severums following behind them, picking off all of those crumbs and stuff like that. It's adorable. But Yes, they will eat and eat and eat. And if you give them the opportunity, they will eat themselves sick. So you definitely have to be careful with these fish. Feed them. I feed these one good meal a day. I don't go overboard and feed them three times a day and all that kind of stuff. These fish are monsters. They've grown really fast. They're super healthy. And I think the strategy has worked for them. But I feed them good quality food. I don't let it get completely out of control. And, uh, and, and yeah, I, my fish are not going to eat themselves to death, but they could do it. I haven't seen one do that, but if anybody was to ask me, what's the one fish that could definitely eat themselves to death? I would say, well, probably catfish would be number one, but the number two would definitely be Oscars. Oscars can survive in poor water conditions. This is definitely true, but don't be a jerk. Don't, don't do that. Let's take care of our Oscars like we would any other fish, but they are definitely one of the hardiest fish in this hobby, and they can tolerate a lot more than some of your delicate fish out there can. But again, we want to treat these just like we would our discus or our angels or betas or whatever it is that we're taking such precious care of. We want to do that with the Oscars. The interesting thing about Oscars is if their water is bad, they will practically tell you. And it's really sad while also being adorable at the same time because the Oscars will literally just kind of lay around like, and they'll just look up at you like, why are you doing this to me? This, this isn't cool. I mean, get off your butt and, and put some clean water in here. This is getting insane. You'll feel like they're saying that to you. If you have never had an Oscar, you don't know what I mean, but if you were to have one, you would know this is definitely true. They, their personality is different than any other fish that I've ever kept. And it almost is like they communicate with you like dogs do. It's, it's the funniest thing ever. Uh, and they will definitely let you know if your water is not 
up to their standards. They'll just start moving slower. They're, they'll be facing down instead of facing up and they'll just kind of mope around like, like a teenager that got their phone taken away. I mean, it's, it's terrible to see and you'll know as soon as the water is not up to their standards, you'll know and you need to get off your butt and you need to take care of that. Uh, but if you are someone that is not the best at, at keeping up with your tanks and all of that, you shouldn't buy any more fish. But if you did, Oscars would be a good choice because they can tolerate that um, to an extent. But you know, just like any fish, you don't do your job, eventually they're, they're gonna go down and I'm gonna be mad at you for it. You don't want that because we all wanna be friends, right? We're all happy. This is a beautiful hobby. It's changed all of our lives. We wanna keep it that way. We don't want somebody being mad at us because we didn't take care of our Oscars. If you don't take care of yours, I'm coming for you. I'm having fun with this, just kind of going with the flow. Let me know if you like this kind of video, just relaxed, easy going, not very much editing. I, I don't know, I like it, this is fun to me. Hopefully it's not too long. Here's one that was not in the intro of this video. Oscars are bullies that won't accept tank mates. This is the first answer that I'm gonna say is true while also being false because they certainly can be jerks and bullies to all of the other fish in the tank or they can be like this. And this is actually a really good example because these fish were bullies and now they're not. They were bullies to fish that were bigger than them. I used to have two arowanas in there and they were nightmares to those arowanas. Uh, but the bikers, not a scratch. The Severums never touched them, never bothered them at all. And the Plecos, I mean, no fish ever bothers Plecos. But uh, that's a great example because they were bullies and now they're not. Uh, Oscars are one of those fish that you don't know what you've got until you've got it. And then you see what's going on. You can have a group of them or just one that is just a, a delight and wouldn't hurt a soul and you can put neon tetras in with them or you might have one that just won't allow you to do anything. Won't allow you to put any decorations in the tank, won't allow you to put any tank mates in there. You just get what you get with these fish. In my experience, except for these, it was only the two, it was the two tigers, the albino and the regular tiger. They were mean to the arowanas. The uh, red has never been mean to anybody. Uh, but uh, until then, <laughs> until these fish, all of the Oscars that I've had haven't bothered anybody. I've had them with Jack Dempsey's, with Jaguars, with Gar, uh, arowanas. That, I've had them with stingrays. I've had them with a lot of different fish. And it, until these two, I never had any problems. The only problems I did have was the other fish being mean to the Oscar. It's a story I've told a million times. We had two giant red devils that we actually bought from a customer of ours when we had our shop. They were fantastic. They were two of the most beautiful fish you've ever seen, but they were total jerks. I have a video that I did a long time ago about them. I'll put it up here. Is it here or there? I'll put, a, I'll put it up in the corner. Uh, these fish were magnificent, but they annihilated an Oscar that I had. But I'm very fortunate that I have a wife who's not only beautiful, but also really good at fixing fish. She actually nursed that Oscar back to health. This fish was laying on its side on the bottom of the tank and the side of his body looked like a filet. It was a nightmare. He looked like what you would see at the store uh, in the meat aisle. I mean, it was really bad but that fish bounced back and lived another like five years after that. So that was impressive. Again, to address the resiliency of these fish, they are very hardy and very resilient. That's been my experience. Most of the time it's other fish being mean to the Oscars, not the other way around, but it really is a flip of a coin. You get what you get and that's just, that's the risk you take when you get into Oscars. This is my favorite one in this whole video. Oscars can be kept in a 20 gallon aquarium. Once again, 1982, according to this book, that's a true statement. Oh, it hurts to say that because you and I know that that is 100% false. We are not gonna put Oscars in a 20 gallon tank unless they're babies and we're just trying to get them a little plumped up before we bring them up into something bigger. But this book says that you can. This book says 
that you can put an Oscar in the tank, in a 20 gallon tank, but you have to know that the fish is not gonna get as big, it's not gonna be as energetic, it's not gonna be as personality, as personable, I don't know how you would say that, but it's personality, he's gonna be kind of a dud, he's gonna be boring, and he's not gonna be as beautiful as he would be if you put him in something larger. So, you know, if that doesn't bother you, put him in a 20 gallon. I'm telling you, that's what this book says. And this is a great example. I'm not saying this book is bad, but that part of it is bad. And the part where if a fish gets sick, you should just kill it. There's a lot of really good information in this book. And there's a lot of great information in books everywhere. But sometimes you might run across one that'll tell you something that we all know is just dead wrong. Will an Oscar survive in a 20 gallon tank? Yes. But you know what? I don't need to go through all the reasons why that's bad. We all know that's bad. I could use the Rottweiler in a one bedroom apartment analogy. I could use all the analogies I could use. I've said them a million times on this channel. I don't need to go over those again. But we all know you can't do it, but this book will tell you that you can, but you'll be making a sacrifice because the fish is just not gonna be as cool as it would be if it was in a larger tank. Uh, listen, this is one of those things, it, it doesn't need to be, I, I don't need to go over it and over it and over it. No, I don't care what this book says. All due respect, Neil Pronick, you're wrong. I'm not an expert and you are because you wrote a book, but I'm telling you, you're wrong. You can't put an Oscar in a 20 gallon tank. If you have an Oscar in your 20 gallon tank, you need to be, your focus needs to be getting that fish in something bigger. What you're doing is wrong to that fish. You're torturing that fish. I don't care what anybody says, Neil, I don't care. It's wrong and you can't do it. Minimum size, I don't like saying this, but minimum size is 75 gallons. I'm, I'm kind of a snob when it comes to Oscars. I've got three of them in a 360 gallon. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you if you have three of them, you have to have them in a tank that size. I'm not gonna tell you, I'm not crazy, but 125 gallons, you are gold. You and I could be best friends. Three of them in a 125, you're gonna be completely fine. 90 gallon, sure, that's fine. Maybe not three of them, but you can have one and a couple of smaller fish in there with them. That's totally fine. But I would really love it if you just avoided Oscars, unless you had 125 gallon. But you know what? If you have a 75, I'm not gonna be mad at you, especially when you show me your, your Oscar in your 75 gallon and you say, you know, he's in there for now, but I'm gonna be moving him up to something bigger down the road, then we're gonna be real good friends. All right, I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this one. You know exactly what I'm gonna say because I've already talked about it a little bit, but it is a very common thing with people that keep Oscars and other large South and Central American cichlids. You will have people that will say they have to be fed live foods. This is false. I can move on. I don't even need to say anything about that. It's absolutely false. And I laugh a little every time I see people in the comments. I have an Oscar. He won't eat anything but live goldfish. I don't care if you don't like it. It's all my fish will eat. I don't want my fish to die. So I, I, that's what I feed them. And I don't care if you don't like it. I'm not going to get in a fight with that person. I'm not going to go back and forth. I got time for all that. But it's, it's just wrong. I don't care. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much of an expert you are, how much smarter you are than me. I don't care how long you've been doing this. If you were to tell me Oscars cannot be taken off of live foods, I will tell you you're wrong. And I'll say it to your face. And I'm not a jerk, I'm really not. But I'm very passionate about this. I have never found a fish that I have not been able to convert to non-live food. I've had fish that were given to me that were, I was told, you have to feed this fish live fish. And I said, <laughs> we'll see about that. And guess what? I didn't feed them live fish because I didn't have to, because I was able to get them over to whatever it was that I wanted them to eat. I've got those two bikers in there. You go watch videos on bikers. They're gonna tell you, I don't know that they're gonna tell you to eat live food. I wouldn't tell you that, but they'll tell you, you know, fish, shrimp, whole things and all this. I got mine eating pellets. I don't give them to them every time. I alternate by the days because it's a pain in the butt to cut up the fish. But I will cut up tilapia, I'll cut up cod, I'll cut up shrimp, uh, frozen, all three of those being frozen. I'll thaw them out and I'll put them in there for them. And it's like a delicacy. But the days that I don't do that, I feed them 
pellets. And so we're not talking about bikers in this video, but I'm just saying it doesn't matter what people say on YouTube. You have to feed them these things. No, you do not. You do not have to give these fish live feeder fish, particularly. Oh, we all know how I feel about that. Uh, the guppies and the night crawlers and all these things. You don't have to do that. When they're hungry, they'll eat. And if they're not eating, when they're hungry enough, they will. I promise they will. And they'll eat what you give them. Worst case scenario, if the only thing you can do is get them to eat freeze-dried shrimp, like krill, I have a giant jar of that over there. I don't think you can see it on camera, but it's the Tetra Jumbo, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like a big giant coffee can. I buy those, that's what I feed them every other day. And then the days that I don't feed them that, I feed them the Hikari Jumbo Carna Sticks. And they do really well on that. They've always eaten that though. But if somebody had an Oscar that they gave to me and said, hey, guess what? Uh, you know, I know you don't do this for your other three fish, uh, but with this one, you're gonna have to feed them live food. I would say, nope. And you know what? That new fish would see what all the other ones are doing and he would eventually figure it out. These fish are smarter than we give them credit for. They would figure it out. Oh, they're eating those? Okay, maybe I'll try that too. And guess what? Give me a couple of weeks and I would have your fish that is forbidden from eating anything other than live food. And I promise you, I'll have that fish eating exactly what my three fish does, what they eat, what they does, what they eat. I've done it. I don't even know how many times and I could do it with yours. So don't tell me in the comments, don't even waste your time saying, my, hey, my fish eat live and that's all there is to it. You're wasting your time. Your fingers could be used for such better things. You don't need to worry about that. But anyway, enough of a tangent. I could obviously go on and on and on about this all day long, but I'm not gonna do that because you got things to do. You can't spend all day watching this video. So there you go. True or false, Oscar fish, one of my absolute favorite fish. I think I'm probably gonna have one in my casket buried with me uh, when I die. I, that's how much I love Oscars and put one on my headstone. I think that would be really cool. I love these fish so much. Uh, I've got a lot of videos on this channel about Oscars and I'm sure I'll be making more down the road. So if you're into that, you might wanna go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, but anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about this kind of format. Just, just kind of a, let's see what happens kind of thing. Let's spend some time together. Let's talk about Oscars. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. I like doing it this way. But if YouTube hates me doing it th this way, I'm going to have to go back to doing the other stuff. But I've had a lot of fun with this. I hope you did too. I got to sign off. Otherwise, I'm going to be at this all day. And me and Neil, we need to have a talk. But thank you so much for watching. And until I see you again, take care.